Hi, Devro here. Thanks for tuning into my portal's how-to video. In this video, we're going to discuss the material function Petalize and how to integrate into your material. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and start with a fresh install of a third-person blueprint project. And then I've already added the portals pack to it. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the, the person itself, the pawn the character, and then find it in the uh, browser by hitting Control B. I open this up and what we want to see over here is the the mesh and we see that this is the material for it there's actually two materials there's one for the body one for the chest so i'll show you how to take care of multiple uh, material ids so let's go ahead and go to where the main body is and what we'll want to do is open that up and then uh, the material function we're looking for is called puddle eyes so we'll go ahead and search mf there it is under puddle eyes click that and basically what we'll want to do is this is a full at, uh, material attributes we'll want to break that so we'll do a break break material attributes and then we'll go ahead and change on the shader itself make it not use material that way it's easier one less node to worry about all right so we'll go ahead and just connect over the base color the metallic the specular the roughness and the mission we'll leave alone for right now. We'll go ahead and go to opacity. Depending on what shader model you're using, you might want to use opacity or opacity mask. For ours, it's going to be opacity mask. So we'll want to multiply that with an M node. We'll go ahead and multiply it out with the opacity mask of the puddle wise material function. And then we'll connect it over to opacity mask here. Uh, the next thing we'll go ahead and uh, connect up is the normal map. And then the world position offset, we'll just go ahead and connect from here to there. And then our emission channel, we'll want to connect up into the outer output there and then that's all you have to do to actually get the, the material function of the effect uh, injected in to have it move up and down through the portal itself so after that's uh, done let's go over to the um, save that and go over to the material itself because we want to now create a material instance of that you'll see all the new uh, parameters we have to expose so once we find it back in the browser here we'll Go ahead and click on the material itself and right click and create material instance. We'll go ahead and use a better name convention than instance at the end. Put it in the front MI. And we'll just call it one. What the heck? Why not? And once we open that up, you can see now we have more options on the right here. The options that come with the the material function are underneath the category options. So what we want to do is go ahead and set up a few of these options. The first thing we want to do is set up the warp in amount because right now it's at zero. We can't see the model. So let's go ahead and make it a full one. Um, it always helps to put the model in if you can. So we'll go ahead and see if it's in the right material ID. We'll go to this here, that bad boy, and come over to the material itself and click on the teapot. Thank you, sir. We may have another. All right. So now once we have the actual dude in here, we can start making some of these adjustments. Let's go ahead and turn on the, um, the balance amount. And let's just see what happens if we, uh, we're not going to change anything. We're just going to change the driver. The warp in amount is actually how we um, drive the effect with all everything, all the options hooked up. So this is the main thing that you would drive from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. So we'll go ahead and bring him down and you can see he goes down on the ground right so what we want to do is adjust it because he's actually going down faster than we want it to so let's do minus minus one minus one there we go and then we'll him in now he's staying on the ground you see uh it's basically one, one times its bounds multi multiplies so basically how far the distance it calculates it so we don't want to actually go down underneath the ground you can see it's going just to a plane and then smash it out. Before what we were having, we'll just go back to default. Go, go back here. You see it's going out farther than what you want. And this all depends on exactly where your origin is. So I would adjust it to one or negative two. Um, go ahead and the other thing we want to do is uh, we really don't want it minus one, right? Because sure, it looks great. But the problem is that it'll actually uh, stack on top of each other. You'll get a flickering. It's hard to see what the the glow channel on right now but you'll get like a uh, shared material across all the different on the same plane you'll get like a flickering effect so what I like to do is do negative 0.99 that keeps it from stacking 100 percent and gets rid of that little effect and now we go ahead and go all back up and then we'll go over to uh, enable etching friends we can do that that's more expensive effect that'll actually break up the edging um, 
And it's also the uh, same thing for the opacity. But we're going to skip down to the fringe color. We can change what color we want when it uh, warps in. Uh, we'll wait for the shaders, shaders to compile here. And we'll go ahead and change this to, I don't know, let's change it to like a, something like that. And maybe a value of 10. Let's see what happens. All right. And then the fringe location is the next thing that's really important. Right. So if we drive our warp in amount down, you see, look where the fringe is. It's not lined up correctly. So what we want to do is line that up. Well, the, we'll go ahead and go up to 0.99, and we'll want to bring that fringe all the way down. So the way to do that is go ahead and start going. Give it some value here. We'll want to have that fringe at the bottom of its feet to where it's just disappeared. Uh, one back, right, right about there. All right, so now as we go all the way down, but then you see now now it's stuck at the ground. That's that's if you want it there. If you wanted the fringe location a little higher, you go more right there if you wanted to, and then it looks a little higher there too. So you know where the portal is. So there's some adjustment that can be done there. And then uh, the other options here is is floor portal. We want to leave that yes because there's some different math that make it a, a ceiling portal. Uh, the glow multiplier that's good for now. It's set to 100 times whatever that is. So we can technically we didn't have to put that glow value in there. Orientation this is basically set to go up and down. There are some options that you can mess around with going from side to side. Um, so there's the there's that. There are some, it depends on the model, some of them models will work, some models won't, and it also depends on what direction in the world you're in and how it's imported. Um, and then the warp in model, that's skin of the driver. So those are the main options you have. So what we want to see is that when we can drive it from zero down to one, that it disappears once it gets all the way down to zero and it's gone. Now if you want to uh, add these other options like the edge fringe, we'll do that. And we have to start changing some more of these options and wait for the shaders to compile. All right, now the shader's compiled. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and just leave everything as is, and go ahead and warp it down and see what changed. Now you can see that the edge is broken up here. Now we have a broken up edge as we go down. Now we may want to do some changes on exactly uh, how far this friend's location is. So now we want to go a little farther down, possibly to like maybe right there. Depending on the textures that's being used for it, um, right here is the default texture that's being used. It will change the look and style of it. So let's go ahead and go back up. You can see now the edges are broken in. There we go. Then we can also do the edging opacity. Wait for shaders to compile. All right, so now with the, with the edging opacity set, and we'll go ahead and just drive it to see the differences by turning it on with the settings we already had. And we'll move it down. As you'll notice that it actually starts disappearing. You see that the bottom of the feet disappear. There's actually a, uh, cutting out some of the, the model and be see-through instead of just making it glow. So there's some adjustments we can do on that. We'll go ahead and go here and here. And go ahead and change the friends location a little bit more. Go back one where it was just starting to come in. Right here, we need to have some pinkness to it, so we need to change that friend's location. Again, this could change with whatever texture that you, that you use. And we'll go ahead and drive it again. There we go. Actually, we want it to even be lower. And then we can actually drive that opacity uh, offset down too. We want to. But that's what this is for. We can actually drive it down a little bit lower if you want to. There we go. And then adjust it. Then as we go down, it's all being warped out. And then it'll pop off. All right. So now that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. That's a pretty good little setup of, of it going out. Because we also have an effect, the portal effect over that. So it's going to be a blend and be a little bit of bloom. So it's all going to match in pretty, pretty good. All right, so let's save that. And that's how we set up the material to um, these options here, and depending on what max we have. Now, the last thing we want to talk about is what fringe texture we want to use. So we can actually change what that texture is. And each texture will cause a different, um, uh, a different effect. Let's go ahead and go to where this is at. We don't want to use the engine one. We want to use 
some of the ones that come in here. Okay. Go to textures. We'll, we use a fire. I'll try a fire one. Go in there. Put that in there. Now you can already see it's already changing the look of it. Now we're going to have to change some of our settings to make it look correctly. So, but that, that's you go with the same process. You adjust it because each of the contrast of the texture makes a difference for where that level of opacity versus um, uh, value is. So this texture is a little different, so it's going to be a little bit adjustment. So each texture you want to use and then have a little different edging, uh, you can sit there and adjust it there uh, with the same uh, so, with the same setting we just went through. Uh, and the last thing I want to talk about is the texture fade. So we can sit there and say, at what point does that fade out? As you can sit there and see, you can drive that effect in and out here too. So this is another option to drive the effect if you wanted to just to fade it out that way. That's one of the ways to do it. But it won't drive it down. So you have you gonna have a dissolve effect versus uh, if you want to move up and down. So you see that either way you want to do it. But that's another option you can do here. Uh, and then there's the other thing I wanted to show you was the detail speed. So if we open that up, that actually will make the uh, these these little pieces, this mask, flow upwards. We'll go ahead and give it a value of let's do one. Let's try that and save it. See what will it do when we drive it? Where's the driver? Now what you'll see, well, let's do something a little more drastic. There you go. Now you can see that it's it's changing quite a bit. We have a nice drastic amount of speed in there, so it's making that texture really jitter around more like electricity. So that's one other option you can do at the very end there to really give it more of a cool look. We'll go ahead. That may be fast, but we'll need to adjust that once we get into the, um, the effect itself. So I, I do like the way that one looks now with that scrolling details. So now you see how that's going in. It's looking like there's some flickering and fluttering going on and something just scanning him. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to default to one so we can see the dude. Save that out. All right, so what we need to do is go ahead and create a material instance for the chest logo. Now, chest logo itself, it says M here, but it's actually a material instance of this. So what we want to do is we want the same settings that we already have. So we'll duplicate this one. Hit duplicate and then make this the, uh, the uh, chest one also. So now these two are the portal with the portal, uh, same portal numbers. We'll go ahead and open this up. And what makes this one different uh, for the chest is we need to turn on the plastic override turn that on and then normal map we need to change that too so we'll open up the the other one here and then go to there and switch it over to this one and voila we're done so now that way we have everything set up exactly the same already we don't have to copy the over the um, numbers manually so that's the quick way of doing that one and the last thing to do is to actually set it as the default to the model as soon as it saves and compiles shaders all right, so we'll go ahead and go to the mannequin itself. Double click on it. We want to do it inside the mannequin itself so that it's always the right one. And we'll go ahead and just move to the side here and go to the chest. And we'll make this one the chest. Find some screen space here. We'll go ahead and uh, do it this way. There we go. We'll put the chest on here and then the, uh, the body on here. And hit save. Now, every time we have the third-person character, we have it as default. All right, now, since it's default, we go ahead and drive the material itself to give it a, a look over. Go ahead and open that up, and we'll go ahead and move it over to the side so we can see. Go to the warp in amount, and we can actually test drive it from 0 to 1. You can see that it's actually looking pretty good. So there you have it. That's how you get the material set up. The next video, we'll talk about how to go ahead and integrate the blueprint and put the portal itself on. So thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.